Hey, look at that. A second video on the same day? Well, it's September 8th, folks. It's Star Trek Day. So, of course, in addition to the STO video, which would have gone up a couple of hours ago for your, uh, you watching this the day it posts, time for another tier ranking video. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so I've had this one sitting in the queue uh, for a while, and I'd forgotten that there are like more than 90 characters to go with here. So I am going to plow through these with very little commentary. I know that's probably going to make for a rather boring video, but I will limit any commentary to choices that I think might be controversial and following with the pattern from the Batman movies video, because I think this works for me. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. And this one, actually, uh, this is very much a case of depends on the actor. I put depends on the actor at the bottom because, well, some of these characters have had several actors playing them over the decades, and some have just done a demonstrably better job than others. Uh, don't worry, Spock will not be on that list because, you know, for all the faults I have with uh, the Kelvinverse movies, in particular that toilet grenade that was into darkness, Zachary Kinto did a great job in the part, and I think Ethan Peck is actually even better. I mean, obviously none of them can top Nimoy, but, you know, c'est la vie. So, uh, we're going to start with Depends on the Actor, and... That's definitely Pike. Uh, no offense to Jeffrey Hunter. I think a lot of it had as much to do with when The Cage was written, more so than Hunter himself. But The Cage Pike is actually not that great. I mean, he gets better by the end of the episode and actually had this it gone to series with that original cast. I think Pike would have become even better. But I, I think we've seen the kind of man Pike will be with uh, Anson Mount and so since Anson Mount's not on here I'm putting that on depends on the actor and look I've already gone off the rails so again sticking with depends on the actor we're going to do I... <laughs> okay wow that going through this that actually that seems to be the only one <laughs> Okay, well, that was a pleasant surprise. Okay, so let's just go with the characters that I just do not like at all. Oh, they might have one good episode or scene here or there. Maybe the actors did the best they could with some really crappy scripts. But I also don't think too many of these are going to be controversial. Or, okay, uh, no. I think the characters you're actually supposed to dislike, I'll go ahead and put them into C as a way to differentiate. Because, I mean, I think there is a difference between a character that you're supposed to like, but the writers failed, and a character you're supposed to hate, and the writers succeeded. So, characters I do not like? Again, I don't think too many of these will be controversial. But, uh... Mm. Actually, no, I'm not going to put Archer in there because season three and four, he got much better. So. Hmm. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, so Chicote is going in there. Uh. Okay, I'll be honest, in some of these cases, I freely admit my dislike for the actor is affecting that, but I, I mean, I will try to be fair, but for some of these guys, it's going to be harder than others. So yeah, Ichib, just, oh god, fuck that guy. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Sorry, Neelix. Ethan Phillips, you're great. Neelix, you had a couple of good episodes, but otherwise, no. Yeah, Wesley Crusher, that's just, uh... Ah, come on. There we go. Yeah, I know, that was probably a layup, but... 
Mm, no. Uh, Flox is basically guilty of genocide when you get right down to it. I mean, have you seen Dear Doctor? Yeah, okay. Uh, whatever your name was, Romulan, Cersei Lannister. It is amazing how much Game of Thrones has permeated my pop culture lexicon, considering I only ever watched one episode and I hated it. But yeah, Romulan, Cersei Lannister, whatever her character's name was, uh, she's a not not very deep, and she killed Hugh. So fuck her sideways. Yeah, I, I think that's it for the D tier. Let's move on to the C tier. That's going to be a mix of characters that are okay and characters that you hate, but you're supposed to. And because I mentioned the whole much better in the second half of the show than he was in the first half of the show, we're going to put Archer here. Uh, oh, I don't blame Sonequa Martin-Green at all. That That's definitely... They, they need to give her better scripts. Uh, same deal with Arium. They gave her her best stuff in her final episode, which is unfortunate. Ducat was... Honestly, almost too good as a villain, and I think the writers realized that a little too late. Uh, same. Borg Queen. Uh, performances were performances were solid enough from the two actresses who've played her so far, and we're getting a third one in season two of Picard. But it's debatable if she should have existed in the first place. Lore, and eh, they didn't do enough with him. Zion, eh, just kind of there. Kai Wen. Louise Fletcher did such a great job with that character. You, you just look at her and you just feel the evil coming off of, off of her, which, I mean, and, and by all accounts, Louise Fletcher in real life is actually a really nice person, but I, I think generally some of the best villain actors are actually really nice people in real life. I, I don't recall hearing too many terrible things about actors who've played Jason Voorhees or Leatherface, for that, for example. Mm. Yeah, we'll put Harry Kim in the meh category as well. Mayweather, definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm maybe I'm rushing this a little too much. I need to come up with justifications for B, A, and S, aren't I? Uh, so, I mean, if these ones are like the okay and you're supposed to hate them... Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, Hmm. Uh, it just did not do enough with Kess or with Yeoman Rand, so I just kind of eh, okay. Yeah, I think when I get to B, it's going to be like, I, I mean, I like them, but not so much that I would defend them if somebody online would, did like a video did put out like a YouTube video about how terrible they are. <laughs> so just going down here. Do, 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 do. Uh, put Lorca there. I don't think they did. Uh, oh, geez. Okay, this is. Yeah, I think they overdid it after his reveal of being from the Mirror Universe. Uh, Trip, ooh, you know, as much better as in season three and four Archer was than season one and two. Trip was even more so, so I think I'll save him for B tier. Uh, Christine Chapel, they did, they didn't really do enough with her either. 
same deal with uh, Tasha Yar. Uh, Dr. Same, uh, Dr. Gerardi can go there too, depending on how season two turns out. Okay, they have both. I'm guessing that one is Soji, the one who didn't die, so we're gonna put Daj in C. All right. Okay, uh... Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm fairly happy with the C tier. Okay, so B tier is like, I don't think they're terrible, but I'm not gonna get all up in arms if someone says they suck. So, yeah. Okay, here, yeah. Yep, both Janeway and Kirk. You heard me. I think B tier is also going to be for characters that I've disliked for a long time but have come to reevaluate recently and to start with on that front we'll go yeah dr pulaski do you ever see the renegade cut video about her that certainly had me rethinking things oh wait hold on a second let me put laurel down in c tier forgot to do that earlier hmm let's see oh i forgot to put the female changeling in c tier too god see rushing this was a terrible idea <laughs> Okay. Uh, now, easily one of the most likable people in Enterprise was uh, Sato. But they also really did not do... They underutilized her almost enough for me to put her in C tier, but eh, no, I am still okay with B tier. Same deal with Captain Georgia. I noticed they have Captain Georgia on here, but not Emperor Georgia, even though she got more screen time. Or at least I'm assuming that's Captain and not Emperor. Uh, same deal with Lita. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Yeah, we'll go with uh, Deanna Troy for B tier as well. Mm, same deal with uh, with Jake Cisco. Yeah, B tier. Yeah, you might be able to make the case that I'm rushing this video too much, but I've already made one other video today that I actually had to do twice because I forgot to turn the microphone on and it's still pretty hot and I need to get to bed early tonight because I got to work tomorrow so uh oh yeah there we go I, I mean you know I think she gets a bad rap but to a certain extent I think Lwax Hunter is supposed to be annoying and also that one video oh video that one episode where we learned about the daughter she had before Deanna that was genuinely good so yeah I, I feel okay putting her right there oh, Esri definitely B tier if they'd given her more time I think she actually could have been a great character and honestly I think she gets a bad rap quite a few of these characters I put on here get a bad rap in my opinion Uh, let's see here. Uh, and there are characters on here that I like, but I don't really feel comfortable putting them in either A or S tier. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Uh, let's go with... Yeah. Uh, Soji goes in there. Actually... Uh, Narek, I guess. Most of the Picard people are going to go into uh, B tier, to be honest. You know, like Romulan Legolas there. I know he has a name, I just don't remember it. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Ash Tyler from Discovery, putting him in B tier as well. At Damar and 
Gowron. Mm. Yeah, Vic Fontaine, Dr. McCoy. I'll put T'Pol in there too, I think. Morn, Cassidy, Yates. This is going to be mostly, most of these people are going into B tier. Uh, Belana Torres? She's got some great episodes, but I think SF Debris said it best. It's like she basically only ever gets like three plots, you know, fix something, hit somebody, or have sex. So, and I think the character deserved a little better than that. Uh, same deal with Dr. Crusher there, minus the hit somebody, I guess. Hmm. Tom Paris is going to go there too. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, Jed Z as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're getting we're getting into the people. I I either. Uh, hmm. Uhura got some great moments, but I don't think they re the franchise really gave the character a chance to shine until she was played by Zoe Saldana. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, Reed was actually almost a really good character, but not quite. I'm going to put him to the B tier. Uh, okay, I think... Uh... Uh, see here. Uh, this this may be the most. Well, okay, all of my tier ranking videos are arbitrary when you get right down to it, but I think this one might be the most arbitrary of my arbitrary lists. But we're getting into the A tier and the S tier. I'm going to consider S tier characters that I do not want to hear people talking shit about in the comments. You keep that to yourself. I mean, you're entitled to it, your opinion, and I am not going to try and change it. I am just not interested in hearing it. So, but A tier, I'm a little more open to debate. I like them more than the characters in A and B tier, but not. They're not like. Well, I don't even want to. I don't want to use the word untouchable for S tier, but it's like if you wanna. You gotta be really convincing, and you know, being a well, excuse me in the YouTube comments is not the way to do that. Okay, so the A tier. Yeah, for ah, damn it! I wish it would go up automatically. That would be so much easier. Make things so much easier. But yeah, uh, Picard, Guinan, definitely. Um, I'm gonna put, yeah, put Ensign Row and, uh, oh, come on, there we go. And Rom in there. Keiko gets so much shit that she does not deserve and I do not wanna hear it. All, all you fans who hate Keiko O'Brien can just go jump off a cliff. I, I, I do not care. Okay, uh, Q. Oh, God. Poor Q. Th his Voyager episodes. Two-thirds of his Voyager episodes were just so bad. It kind of hurt the character a little bit. I, I'm really... I mean, season two of Picard is probably going to redeem that. But, I mean, like, they, they managed to redeem Data's death from the end of Nemesis, which I wouldn't have thought possible, but they did it. And it's... One of the highlights of uh, Picard, to be honest. Odo, um, actually, no. I'm, you know, now that I think about it, yeah, I'm putting. I was going to put Odo in a tier, but then I remembered the Renegade Cut video that you did about him, and yeah, pretty much everything good, every everything great about Odo, 
comes from René Arbogenois, and everything good comes from the writers. But the character, when you really break it down, when you look at the things that he actually did, oof. You know what? I'm even hurting myself a little bit here, but I'm putting him back down in C tier. I should have done that earlier. Okay. Oh, right. And, uh... No, oh, I forgot to put Tuvok in B tier. My bad. Okay, so where are we getting? Uh, A tier. Still in A tier. Uh... Um, mm, mm, yeah, uh, Trip and Jordy are both going into A tier here. Uh, great engineer characters who got some bad stories. Trip more so than Jordy. Uh, Jordy comes across as a little bit of an incel in a couple of episodes. Just goes to show you how charming of person LeVar Burton is that that doesn't really come through except with, like, several years of hindsight. Trip in Season 3 and 4 of Enterprise is a guy you actually could believe could operate something like, you know, a matter, antimatter, faster than light engine, where this is Season 1 and 2. I'm not sure you would trust him to run a, run a rowboat. So, <laughs> of course, that reminds me of a joke about Archer, which is like, you know, it's like, season f I, that I've make about that I made about Archer that I make a lot actually which is season 4 Archer is a guy I'd follow I'd trust to lead me into battle season 1 Archer is a guy I wouldn't trust to run a dairy queen <laughs> okay but anyway Scotty's a great character he's going up into A I'm noticing it's mostly engineers in the A tier because <laughs> I mean uh, Rom is in engineering and yeah uh I'm going to put Sulu in the A tier as well. And check off. Yeah. Mm. Shran. I'm going to put Shran in the A tier. And Wayun as well. Uh, no, you know... No, no. Wei Yun is such a great villain, and Jeffrey Combs is so charming as him. It's just, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put Wei Yun in the S tier. Screw it. Okay, do I have any more for the A tier? Yeah, uh... Mm. Yeah, Rafi from Picard. I really like Rafi, but I don't know if I would put her in... don't know if I like her quite enough to for S tier. I, I kind of want to see more what they do with her in 7 of 9 in Season 2. Okay, uh, a few more for A tier, I think. Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, Worf. Mostly a great character. The one blind spot is, is he's just kind of a horrible father. <laughs> I mean, he's, like, good at pretty much everything else, but, yeah. I don't know what the writers were really going for on that one. Okay, and... Any more? Just put an A tier. Okay. Uh, considering that these two characters managed to make, managed to really connect with a lot of the fans even before we knew that much about them beyond their names and their jobs, I feel pretty good about putting Detmer and Awosakun in A tier. Also, some, there's some really good shipping content out there for those two, by the way. I would not be against it if Discovery Season 4 made that canon. I mean, they don't they don't have to, but it, it would be cool. Okay, uh... Oh, uh, hmm. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's it for A tier. So, we are getting into the S tier, the characters that I feel pretty comfortable in saying that I really, 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 really like, and don't particularly want to hear anything bad about. And so, who's left? Well, yeah, on the, in case you're watching this on a smaller screen and can't see it, I guess I might as well say it, and it just occurred to me that I have been speaking so fast through this video. I am so sorry. It, 
if it was cooler in here, I would not be doing that. I'd even be willing to make this into a two-part video, but... Okay, it's not just the heat, it's also the fact that I waited to record this till literally the day before I wanted to post it. That was a very, very stupid idea, and you are well within your rights to hold it against me. If you want to give the video a dislike because of that, you know, you just, you just go right ahead. I will not hold it against you. Totally fair. All right, so. Uh, how, long, how long have I been recording? Hold on one second. 26 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, if I have anything particularly interesting to add, I'll do it, but okay. So, I already put Wei Yun up in S tier. Next up after him is... Last name Cisco, first name... No, last name The Cisco, first name Don't Fuck With. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Culber. The reminder that, unlike most franchises, Star Trek treats coming back from the dead like a big deal. As it should. As it should be treated. Coming back from the dead should be treated as a big deal. EMH. Even in the bad episodes, Robert Picardo brings out the potential of that character. Garrick. Plain and simple Garrick. Naomi Wildman. Fight me. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> just, just put get hands off the keyboard. Did it. That. That. No. I see you. Nog probably has some of the best character development across the entire franchise. I, I'm not even sure there's anybody in New Trek who's had that level, or at least not yet. I mean, we, we can see how... The rest of Discovery, Picard, and Lower Decks go, as well as the, as well as Prodigy and Strange New Worlds, and uh, I'm actually a little disappointed that Lower Decks isn't on here, but eh, oh, what can you do? Okay, Major Kira, to total badass. Riker, they should just, <laughs> they should just make Riker being bisexual canon. I'm sorry. It's like... They, you don't even necessarily need to show it on screen. Just just have somebody mention it. That, that'd be fine. And by the way, the Riker saves the day scene at the end of season one of Lower Decks was way better than the Riker saves the day scene at the end of season one of Star Trek Picard. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, is anyone shocked that Spock is in the S tier. I mean, you might as well call it the Spock tier. I mean, you don't really, you don't, I'm sorry, I know that Kirk was the captain, but you don't have Star Trek without Spock. Continuing on with the S tier, and I hate that I have to, I hate that it doesn't let me just scroll them straight up. It just makes, that would make it so much easier. But yeah, data, and then Saru, Doug Jones is brilliant in pretty much everything he's in, even if it's, even if what he's in itself is not necessarily good, like say the Fantastic Four sequel. Seriously, Tim Story, telling Jessica Alba to cry pretty, what does that even mean? I mean, I know Jessica Alba's not the best actor in the world, but come on, even a good actor would have would shouldn't have to put up with that kind of bullshit. All right, Stamets. Okay. It is, in a way, oddly refreshing that Star Trek's first canon gay character in the TV shows is so not a stereotype. He could have just so easily been, like, like the sassy best friend, but the fact that he's kind of an arrogant asshole is oddly refreshing. <laughs> And the thing is, it's not without merit. He, the guy is clearly very good at his job. So, yeah. Stamets, definitely. Okay, uh, apart from Nog, Bashir is another character who probably has some of the best character development across the entire franchise. And it's like, the, the whole thing with the hiding his background as an augment was probably was almost certainly not planned from the beginning 
but wow, did they make it work. It, it makes some of the really dumb stuff he does in season one actually make a lot of sense in hindsight. And the fact that it, that wasn't planned honestly kind of makes it better. It, it just goes to show you what a good writer can do if you give them the right materials. I mean, look, pl planning everything is great, but it also has a lot of chances to backfire. I mean, even JMS, when he was doing Babylon 5, it's like, yeah, he had a lot of stuff planned out, but he also made sure to keep in mind things like actors quitting or dying or stuff like that that might, th or, you know, uh, season orders getting cut, budgets getting cut that would affect the story so that... I mean, I mean, you know, you want an example of what happens when you have a show, a planned out show that is just completely on rails with no freedom whatsoever. Look at what happened to Netflix's Defenders. Part of the reason that was so bad was because they'd planned everything out for that so far in advance that when Daredevil Season 2 came out and nobody gave a shit about the hand, it was too late for them to go in and fix it. So anyway, sticking with S tier. Quark is the character that pretty much single-handedly saved the Ferengi race from just being nothing but a joke. So, yeah. And, and you, love, you gotta love how he kinda, he does have, like, a conscience, but he's still also kind of ruthless at the same time. I, I kind of I respect that kind of nuance. Tilly is just a really fun character, and it's been it's been interesting watching her growth over the past several years on Discovery. And of course, you know you got to have the most important man in all of Starfleet, <laughs> Miles O'Brien, and also bonus points because of all the <laughs> suffering they put him through on that series, and also for being the one to encourage uh, Rom and yeah, yeah, Rom and Lita to form the Union in that one episode. <laughs> Okay, with Seven of Nine, you know, I had the good fortune to have actually seen Jerry Ryan in something before Star Trek Voyager, so I was aware that she could act. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people who watched the show when she first came on really only saw her as, you know, tits and ass, but, you know, I had more context to work with, and she did a really good job in that role, and she did a great job bringing the character back for Picard, too, so looking forward to see where that goes in Season 2. I mean, she got some dumb episodes. It, it, some episodes, it really seemed like they were actually undoing some of her character development just so that, just so that she could do it again, which was kind of annoying. But, hey, you know, that's Voyager for you. Wasted potential? Thy name is Voyager. All right, and last two. Hugh. Oh, poor Hugh. He, he definitely deserved better in Season 1 of Picard. I would have... It would have been so great if he could have been a, like a main character along with everybody else, like Raffi and Soji, and I mean, certainly more interesting than Doctor Gerardi. You know, no, no offense to Allison Pill who plays Doctor Gerardi, but yeah, I mean, here's hoping they do more with her in season two. And lastly, oh, you know, at the very least, Santiago Cabrera should have gotten a nom an Emmy nomination for having played Rios. And for playing Re and Rios's holograms on La Serena, such an interesting character. I I I'm glad we're going to be getting more of him. I sh I've heard really good things about the uh, Star Trek Picard novel that kind of goes into his backstory, and it's it sounds really neat. And I should probably and I really want to check that out. But I I really like this character, so I have no qualms about putting him in S tier. And and you know I'm not that's going to be him and. The La Serena hologram. Because what La Serena translate to, I basically just said the the Serena. Uh, uh, him and La Serena's holograms, all, I'm, I'm just lumping them all together as one, and that's enough to have him up here in the S tier. Okay. All right. So since I did that, like, really rapid fire talking, and again, I am really sorry about that, Let's just do a quick review before I close out this video. That probably will not be a regular thing. 
Unless, of course, I get another video that has, like, more than 90 entries. Oh, my God. I am honestly surprised that this only took me 35 minutes. Okay, wow. Uh. Hmm. Recap, then close out. Okay. Uh, I expected to put more people in here than I did, but depends on the actor tier. Christopher Pike. D tier. Just don't like them. Chakotay, Icheb, Neelix, Wesley, Dr. Flox, and Larissa. That was the character's name. It was Larissa. C tier. Jonathan Archer, Michael Burnham, Arium, Ducat, the Bork Queen, Lore, Zial, Kai Wynn, Harry Kim, Travis Mayweather, Kess, Yeoman Rand, Captain Lorca, Nurse Chapel, Tasha Yar, Dr. Gerardi, Dodge, Laurel, Female Changeling, and Odo. B tier, Captain Janeway, Captain Kirk, Dr. Pulaski, Hoshi Sato, Captain Giorgio, Lita, Deanna Troy, Jake Sisko, Loxana Troy, Ezri Dax, Soji, Narek, oh god, what the... Elnor, right, Elnor, Ash Tyler, Damar, Gowron, Vic Fontaine, Dr. McCoy, T'Pol, Morn, Cassidy Yates, Bilana Torres, Dr. Beverly Crusher, Tom Paris, Jadzia Dax, Lieutenant Uhura, Malcolm Reed, and Tuvok. A tier. Captain Picard, Guinan, Rolaren, Rom, Keiko O'Brien, Q, Trip Tucker, Jordi LaForge, Scotty, Chekhov, Sulu, Shran, Rafi, Worf, Owosukun, and Detmer. And then in the S tier. Cisco, Wayun, Dr. Culber, the EMH, Garrick, Naomi Wildman, Nog, Kira Norris, Will Riker, Spock, Data, Saru, Paul Stamets, Julian Bashir, Quark, Sylvia Tilly, Miles O'Brien, Seven of Nine, Hugh, and Cristobal Rios. And a partridge in a fucking pear tree. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, I don't think I want to do one of these huge tear making videos again for a while. Uh, next one, I'm going to look for something that has like like 10 items tops because shit <laughs>